You want a coffee like Mac without running into thermal throttling? And what about yeah, 6 core CPU performance uh, with an all core 5 GHz performance rather than standard clock speeds? And yeah, all of that for a reasonable price. Then this video series is maybe for you. This video series will show you how to build a Core i7 Hackintosh yeah, and how to overclock it and how to get the necessary liquid metal cooling right by deleting the CPU and to choose the appropriate case and cooler. I will also provide some benchmarks and yeah, also show how to install Windows 10 besides macOS to make a dual boot Hackintosh work. In later videos I will show you how to do more advanced things like compiling a custom USB SSDT which is a preference file basically and how to tweak the BIOS for example uh, for better overclocking and better compatibility. But before you get your hands dirty we should maybe first evaluate yeah, why a Hackintosh makes sense for you or why you maybe better avoid building your own. So for the current hardware Macs are way way overpriced for what they offer in terms of specs and yeah, the components that are used do not reflect at all the price tag which a Mac is yeah, somehow worth. And uh, take for example an iMac. So usually they feature a mainboard, an Intel Core i7 processor for example, a DDR3 or DDR4 RAM, a hard drive or a SSD as well as graphics card by AMD for example. So if you sum this up, then you would somehow end up somewhere between one to two thousand euro uh, or dollar basically uh, depending on the performance you've chosen. And for a Mac you pay an average two or three times the price as when you purchase the parts separately. Uh, sure you get the OS shipped so for free basically uh, with the hardware. And I'm also a Mac user since uh, or buyer basically since 2007. But there was a point from my taste where Apple got too greedy and started to charge its users with a too huge premium base. So therefore I decided to build the Hackintosh. <music> Customizability is the next point. With the Mac lineup you are forced uh, yeah, into an ecosystem which is yeah, narrowing down your hardware choices basically. Which is good and bad both. Because you can have just a different few setups. With this few setups you can be sure that the compatibility for example is always guaranteed and that your system runs quite well um, and you don't run into any driver issues for example. How does it look like? You can choose a processor, you can choose the amount of RAM for example and if you want a dedicated GPU or just the Intel graphics that's also up to your choice when you're for example purchasing a MacBook Pro 13 inch rather than a MacBook Pro 15 inch for example. You can also choose how much storage your Mac will have. Apart from that you don't get that much connectivity options besides uh, Thunderbolt and USB-C and on iMacs for example Ethernet as well as USB 3 ports but that's it. One other point is upgradability or upgrades at all. For sure you will get along with a well spec Mac for quite some time. Software gets more performance hungry over the years and this will drive your machine to the limits and over the years Apple took away a lot of upgrade options for Mac users since 2016 the SSD is not even upgradable because it's soldered to the mainboard. In iMacs you can also put in uh, more RAM for example which is at least not soldered by my latest information but um, yeah it's somehow weird because it's done on the MacBook Pros and on the MacBook Airs for example. So. We don't need to talk about the uh, Trashintosh here as well because that's uh, yeah, hopelessly overpriced for its specs and it's very aged hardware and you're also very bond to special components so they are not in a very common format or very common uh, form factor and yeah basically gone are the good days of Mac Pro which was upgradable in a breeze because you had a normal case and you could put in GPUs and all this stuff. Next thing, performance. Uh, if you buy a Mac maxed out, you won't necessarily get maximum performance uh, and this is because to the way Macs are engineered. They are first engineered for being uh, well designed objects from an optical and from an engineering perspective as well, but it's always uh, design focused. 
all of Apple's machines are built to have a small footprint, basically, and they are usually known as the thinnest devices out there. Let's take MacBook Pro line, iMacs, as well as iPhones. And from a design perspective, this is quite nice, but from a yeah, performance perspective, it's horrible, basically, because the less space is left in the chassis, the less space is there to apply appropriate cooling to the components. And uh, this means that CPU as well as VRMs, which are responsible for delivering the constant current to the CPU cores, are overheating. If your VRMs are overheating, you could damage your CPU over time, for example. And the same applies to the processor. And if you add another hot component, basically, so a dedicated GPU, this will make the cooling even worse. When the CPU gets too hot, it will automatically uh, somehow throttle its clock speed to avoid damage to the cores. Um, and when the VRMs get too hot, they will take damage as well. The same applies to the GPU, and the chip will also reduce its clock speed. When it runs too hot, basically, performance will be throttled. Even iMac Pros are running through thermal problems, even though they have specifically designed with a new cooling solution. And uh, Hackintosh, for example, will maybe not look as sexy as an iMac or iMac Pro or MacBook Pro, but it will definitely have more room for appropriate cooling. And this means by using a bigger case, you can apply a huge cooler, which will have a big impact by applying liquid metal to the CPU die and replacing the stock paste, for example, which is, uh, or the stock toothpaste, which is used by Intel, uh, makes things even better and a bunch of case fans will just do the rest. There are a lot of pros, but there are also downsides. When you want to build a Hackintosh, first of all, uh, yeah, you're using a Mac OS without any permission by Apple. By no means, I will encourage you to do this, because if you build a Hackintosh, be aware that you are doing this on your own responsibility and accountability. And um, even though it's pretty straightforward building a Mac OS compatible PC, uh, you will most likely do some research on which components to choose. There are various manufacturers out there and you have to find out what kind of mainboard to use, which chipsets are supported better or less good, and which GPU works well with Mac OS, for example. I will give you my parts list later on in this series but there is no guarantee that everything works as expected, even though you've chosen the exactly same parts. So be aware that it maybe takes hours or even days to figure out problems and how to solve them or resolve them. One very obvious example here is, for example, this custom USB configuration. So every case has a different serial number or different identifier. To uh, get this up and running at the uh, usual USB 3 speed, for example, on every port, this is then quite tricky. So be prepared to spend some time on forums to get uh, everything sorted. And last but not least, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Apple has announced the introduction of an own CPU somewhere around 2020. After 14 years, this could end some of the possibility of building a Hackintosh. So till then, there will be some more Intel Mac generations, I guess. This will be supported throughout some more years before maybe no Intel Mac will be supported by a new major Mac OS version. I think that at least until, I guess, 2022 or something, you should yeah, not worry about this. Hopefully this episode provided you with a starting point if you yeah, should or should not start with the Hackintosh build. And in the next episode, I will provide details about the parts I have chosen. Maybe drop a comment below uh, on your thoughts about Hackintosh to do or not to do and pros and cons. And um, yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers.